my private rituals. Hi. Can I hear you sometime? When Mark comes over, depending on what we're eating, he, he kind of usually just makes his own thing his own way. We're having chicken tacos. You'll eat your uh, tofu. Tofu, it's tofu. Whatever. It's always two pans, one for Mark and then one for the rest of us. Mark, will you eat? What? Will you have me? No. OK, let's eat. OK. Maybe. Where's it? Uh, OK, give me everything. No phones at the table. You have yours. Mm -hmm. I'm not using it. During dinner, I made myself two tacos to seem like I was eating normally. We have no salsa, huh? I ate the first one and hid the second one under a napkin while everyone else was talking. I don't believe anyone saw me. He had made two tortillas to make two tacos today, but I noticed he only ate one. But I'm kind of just happy he's eating anything at all. Are you working on Saturday, Dad? Um. I don't know. I have to go to a therapy session, and I don't know if you want to go with me. What time? I don't know. I'll know more Wednesday. How's that? OK. I was bothered that my dad wasn't sure if he can go to my appointment on Saturday. He doesn't really work Saturdays, so I don't see why there's any reason why he can't go. so hard. You know, when food is your drug, you can't just not go into the food bar. It's everywhere. Food's everywhere. You've got to ingest it. How do I live every day without my drug? How do I look at it, taste it, and not go overboard with it? I don't know. But I need to do this. This is a matter of life and death. Meeting with this dietitian, I'm scared because they take all of your control. You have to eat what they feed you, and they've got a weight regimen for you, and you've got to gain that weight. I'm Brina Jurgensen, registered dietitian in Scottsdale, Arizona. What do you think it's going to be? About 115. It's 116. I could definitely see she does need to do some weight restoration so that her body can function as efficiently as possible. Where you're at weight-wise is really under where you're supposed to be. And a better place for you to be would be somewhere between 120 and 130. <laughs> Does that sound like a doable goal? You could advise if it's a problem. You know, simple as that. I'm sorry. Now I feel like I'm just a big freaking failure. No one believes I can beat this. Brina for lunch, and she challenged me with my trigger food, which is pizza. My role will be to make sure that she can eat the foods that she used to binge on in moderation. I'm going to have a slice of chicken pesto, please. Pizza is definitely a trigger food for me because of the oil and the greasiness of it. What happened the last time you had this kind of pizza? I binged. I purged. Do you feel an urge to binge on the pizza that you have in front of you now? Um. Um, well, let's see. Mm. It was really nice to be able to socialize and enjoy the flavor of the food. A lot of times before, I would be eating it so fast, kind of in a trance, I wouldn't even really taste it. I'm curious if I have gained any weight. Well, can you wait until we're in the office together? Mm -hmm. And let's look at it together. I've got a long way to go still, but I'm making a lot of progress. And I had one slice. It was yummy, and I walked away. It was a very successful day, no obsessive thoughts. And it was really nice to be able to cook a normal dinner and relax and enjoy this meal with my family. We're ready. Come and get it. I want to prove to my husband that I can overcome the eating disorder. Oh, I've got some really, really, really good bread. It's fresh baked in Scottsdale. Drove all the way over there for bread. It's next door to my therapy place. How are you doing, anyway? How does it look like I'm doing? I've never seen you eat that much without binging. <laughs> you plan on keeping this? Yeah, you've been doing it. You're being successful here. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I'm learning how to eat and and eat like regular people and not toss my cookies. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
All you gotta do is stop. Amen. My husband, Sean, he's tried very hard to understand this eating disorder, but it's like a ditch digger telling a surgeon how to perform brain surgery. You don't know. That's what everybody tells people they don't understand it. Well, just quit. I don't know what it's like. I have no idea what it's like to have an eating disorder, nor do I want to know. But you know what, if you really want to quit, you'll quit. You know, it's like smoking. You know, if you want to quit smoking, you'll quit smoking. When food's your drug, you have to, I have to take it in. It'd be like giving an alcoholic a shot and then telling him to stop. That's what it's like for me. I have to eat and I have to quit. Right when I'm just getting started. You it's know, a lot of like, real power, it does. Bull you quit advice if it's a problem. You know, simple as that. And if, and if you can't quit it, try to regulate it. If you can't regulate it, then. Hey. You know, honestly, I'm just kind of getting sick of it, you know, hearing about it all the time. It gets old. I'm sorry. God, I'm a horrible person. And, and now I feel like I'm just a big freaking failure. No one believes I can beat this. They really don't believe I can beat it. They really think I'm going to fail again. How am I supposed to believe in myself? Nobody else will believe in me. Why even try, you know? It's never good enough. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. OK, so with your left hand, I want you to pick a crayon. Okay. My task moving forward is to heighten even further Christy's awareness of how her emotional state contributes to her compulsive overeating. And I need to start giving her some therapeutic tools to release it, other than her old way, which was bulimia. Close your eyes and connect to the emotion, and then release the emotion through scribbling. This is just kind of getting those feelings out, purging those feelings onto paper. There you go. Keep feeling that feeling. Let it out. I do feel a little anger arising up in me. I don't even know why. I feel like a failure. I feel like a loser that can't do anything right. I feel trapped. You're doing great. Keep going. Keep going. I feel worthless. I feel just like scum. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not right. Something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. Good. Good. <laughs> After the client scribbles out the energy of the emotion, I ask them to put words to whatever they are feeling. I wrote, why couldn't you just love me? the way I was. Why did I always have to be something that was too hard for me to be? I'm a child. You shouldn't have to do anything in order to get love. It drove me. And I think it still does. I have to be good enough in order to be loved. I've got to please people. OK, so who are you talking about currently? Just name it. My them. husband. OK. Okay. He says a lot of the same things sometimes that my mom would say. You know, like I'm expressing my feelings and I'm being irrational, I'm being selfish, and I'm not right. When you start to believe it, I don't want the pressure anymore. I, I wish you could better understand and you could applaud it and praise me. Where'd you go? The bathroom. Come on, what the f***? Get out of here. I was just feeling, I was feeling nervous. You know I don't like that, man. Tonight I'm gonna go have dinner with my dad. And I'm actually kind of nervous about that. When I exhaust my topics of conversation. And then I'm gonna feel like a failure of a son. I got a lot of traffic coming up here. That's weird. Lots. Traffic coming up here, though? Bumper to bumper. Oh. Well, thank you. Four. Well, 